Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Um, every once in a while, we're able to grab her, and she is a busy lady, but grab her, and, and uh, she's willing to, to share some of her expertise and, and energy with us. And uh, this was one that she did last year, which was just a delightful program. And so we asked that she do it again, and she was willing to do that. So, Tracy, thank you for spending the time, and I'm going to give it to you for talking about how to build an arbor. All right. Well, thank you and welcome, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to show you guys a quick little presentation, if I can. It's going to be on building an arbor. Let me see. Uh, let me hit play. Sorry. Can everybody see that? We okay. can. Perfect. All righty. Well, we're going to build two different kinds of arbors today. We're going to, I'm, I'm going to abbreviatedly build a wood one out of four by fours and two by sixes. I'm going to give you all of the basic steps to doing it, but I am not going to be drilling the holes into the four by fours or the two by sixes. And that is just because right now, with the cost of lumber and those boards I have set for other projects, I don't want to ruin the integrity of the boards or have to shorten them because they are at the lengths that I need them to be. But I am going to screw into them with the screw gun and use some decking screws so you guys will get the idea. But I will also show you in the presentation the correct tools to use and why to use those. So... I don't know about you guys, but I love arbors of all different kinds. And depending upon what you're going to do really determines on what materials you need. If you are going to do a stick belt one, the material lists here that you see are really the best materials that you're going to do that you're going to need. So I'm going to show you the materials. I'm not going to show you the miter saw or a skill saw. I apologize for that. I probably could run and get one out real quick, but I am. I forgot to bring it out, so I apologize. But I am going to show you the rest of everything and how to do that. And the one that I am going to build is going to be very, very similar to the one that you see in the picture here. And then we're also going to follow safety. I will wear my glasses when I need to wear my glasses. I'll also probably be wearing gloves because I don't want to get any uh, splinters. And most importantly, if you are not familiar with a saw, with a drill, with the different drill bits and stuff, ask somebody for help. You're more than welcome to ask me for help. I am not an expert by any means, but I have been working with power tools now for about four or five years. So I'm pretty comfortable and knowledgeable about most of the stuff when it comes to using them. But the folks at the box stores are really great with answering questions on how to use stuff. So if you have questions, make sure you get your questions answered before you get into the project. But I, most of all, have fun. So we're going to build the wood arbor, and then we are going to build a wire arbor as well. As you can see right behind me, I have one that I built last year. It has my passion fruit vines on it, and they are slowly but surely starting to take over. So we are going to build one of those, which is very similar to the ones that you see in a lot of the school gardens. And I just helped the third, fourth, and fifth graders at the Quest School uh, build one in their school gardens, and they love it. So, most important thing is, is when you decide to build an arbor, you got to find a location. And you're going to want to make sure that you set everything up the way that you want it. You're going to measure out where you want it. And then you're going to think about how you're going to attach your four by fours. There's a couple of different ways that you can attach them. You can use the pre-made cinder blocks. You can purchase those right now at the big box stores for about nine, 10 bucks uh, a block, or you can build one yourself, which is what the upper picture is. The mold comes, they come in, they're about three feet long, and they come in a couple of different widths. And I'm going to grab mine real quick and show you. Mine has been cut down significantly because, well, I've used it for 3,000 projects. And in using this for 3,000 projects, I this is what I have left. But this is pretty close to what you're going to use if you're going to build your own footer for your 
post. What you're going to do is you're going to dig down a couple of feet. You want to go below the frost line, and then you're just going to set this right in there. And you're going to fill it all with cement, and you're going to let that cement dry. There are a couple of different tools that you can use to put the post on the piece of cement. You're going to want to make sure that you level it off really good. And then you can put what's called a J-bolt in when the cement starts to set. You can put a little J-bolt in. It looks just like a J. You put it in the center. You level it. And then you can screw the post into that. Or you can buy the, they have these little block forms that you can get. And they're made of steel. And they adhere to the cement with cement screws. So, and you can do it that way. For ease, I'm going to use cinder blocks today. And you can also use cinder blocks. You just want to make sure that you cement your posts in before you um, actually build the arbor. I'm not doing that today, like I said, so don't follow these instructions verbatim. And with my so PowerPoint. And now we're going to get into some fun. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Nope, no questions? Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to move my laptop so that we can come around here. All right. Let's see. I'm going to adjust. All right. If you can't hear me at any time, let me know because I can always move the laptop and the stool closer. So, the materials that you're going to need are, you're going to need your four by fours. This one here is just a shortened one that I won't be using except for as an example. But you're going to want your four by fours. Then you're going to also want to use your two by sixes. This is a two by six. And what I suggest you do is after you have your location, you're going to take your four by fours. Where's my tape measure at? All right. You're going to take your tape measure and you're going to measure down your four by four to figure out where you are going to want to put your two by four or your, four by, your two by six. I usually do somewhere around five inches, and that's way I have a little bit left above, just in case my four by fours are not the exact same length, but so that everything will be level. Then I mark it, which I'll have my pencil up there. You're just going to mark it. Then you're going to find the center of your board after you mark it. This here is three and a half, so 1.75 is going to be your center mark. You're going to mark your center on that five inches. Then what you're going to do is you're going to lay your four by four down flat. You're going to turn and grab your screw gun or your screwdriver. And if you can, you're going to take the bit out of it that's on there. And you're going to want to use, because the correct bolt that you're going to use to affix your 2x6 to your 4x4 is going to look something like this. This here, I believe, is a, I don't know, this one here is a 10 inch. So this is a half inch by 10 inches. And it's also got a nut and a washer on the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your drill bit. You're going to find your half inch drill bit. The drill bit looks like, everybody see that? Half inch drill bit. This is a wood bit. So you're going to go ahead. So I'm actually not going to get into this. And you're going to find your center five inch mark and you're going to drill straight down. I will tell you, when you get ready. 
ready to drill a piece of wood. Do not be shy, but make sure you are going straight in. You don't want to go in at an angle. You don't want your drill to be at any angle, but you want it to be straight. So go slow and steady. burning up the motor in your screw gun or your drill. So, go slow, just make sure it's straight. Do you have any questions so far? If you have any questions, just holler them out as we go. We are going to put together, in fact, I think I'm going to move that down for just a second. Okay, Rick, you want to move that? Let's go ahead. Okay. We're going to move the laptop down here. Uh, how about right here? There we go, so. Yep. We're going to maneuver around. Sorry. All right. Here we go. All right. So now you guys are right in the action with everything. All right. So now you have your hole in your uh, four by four. So now you're going to do the exact same thing with your two by six. The only difference is, is you're gonna also do two holes. So depending upon after you measure where the five inches is at, just go up a little bit more, maybe an inch and a half, two inches, and that's where your next hole is gonna go dead center. But drill all your holes first. So now this is what we're gonna do. And hopefully I might be a little too close now. All right, sorry about this. Now we're a little too close. You're a little too close in the action. First you weren't close enough, and now you're too close. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our, I have already went ahead and marked where my uh, two by sixes are gonna go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, and we're gonna screw them on, and we're going to do it this way. Here, you want to help me with that other one? Yep, we are kind of putting it here. Put that down right there. Put that one over here, okay? So, we are just lining up our four by fours. All right, and we can go a little bit wider. So I'm gonna move, I'm moving you guys again. You guys are gonna be right in the middle now. All right, so. There we go. Now we got our two by six. I'm gonna use my marks. Here, I'll line these up just like this. And I'm going to come over here and I'll line that one up just like that. Now, the reason why you're going to use two bolts. Now, keep in mind, I'm just going to tack these in, but you're going to screw through all of these with the screwdriver. And, or the, uh, the drill bit, sorry. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pound those 10 inch, quarter inch or half inch nut, uh, bolts and nuts in, and then you're gonna tighten them down really, really good. You're gonna use two on each side, especially depending upon the width of your arbor. Anything over three feet really does require two. And that's to help with what's called lateral strength which is going to be your overhang strength. You want that to be really in the best strength and support possible. And those bolts and those size of bolts are what give that to you. So for time purposes, we're just going to tack these down. And 
we're going to use our screw gun to do that. So, there we go. Right here. One. Try not to get on a knot like I just did. A little harder to go through. Oops. Okay. There's one side. Okay. What are you laughing at? Go. <laughs> oh, and I don't know if you can see my Millie move, but she's my helper today too. <laughs> So she she helps for trees. And the drill gun also affects her shot collar. <laughs> so she shouldn't get too close because she will get shocked. And I don't know why that is, so we're wrong. Okay. So now we have our top header in place on our boards and this is where you're really going to have to help me Rick because we're going to this up. Does everybody see how we did that? Okay and then let's pull it back. Huh? I am just using cinder blocks for mine, and I'm just going to line that up like that. I'll line this one up here. Now, if you're using cinder blocks, like I am, and I will show you guys in just a second. You'll put that one. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, hold on to that real tight. Okay. If you're going to use cinder blocks like I am, and I'm going to give you guys, can you guys all see those? They're just a two old cinder block. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get your cement and you're going to actually put these on and cement these in first. You can do it this way, but it will be much easier if you actually cement these in, let it dry, because then you are going to have a nice strong foundation. And when you go to do that, you're also gonna use two by fours you're going to level it with the level to make sure that it's straight up and down. So you're going to want to have a level here. You're going to level this way and make sure that it's good that way. And then you're going to also level it this way. There we go, right there. That's level. Then you're going to take your two by fours. So let me grab a two by four. Excuse me for just a moment. And you can use really whatever pieces you want. You don't have to use a brand new board like this one here. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your two by four and you're going to screw it on like this. I would probably cut this board in half and then use the other side to support it going like that so it stays level while it dries. You want to make sure that you level two sides and that when you go to uh, do your leveling, put your cement in after you add your two by fours. That way you know your that way you know your level. All right. So now I'm gonna just for safety sake. I'm gonna break in there so it doesn't have too much wiggle room. I'm gonna break in there so it doesn't have too much wiggle room. Now, if this were secure, I would take my second uh, two by six and I would put it on the top. Once this is secure, you are more than safe to do that. And then you just unscrew your bolts and then screw them back on. At, because you're going to have the same drill holes in all three boards. Then to do the top, and let's say you want to add a decorative edge onto your two by six. Wow, this board's heavy. Not quite dry wood, it's heavy. You can do that a couple of different ways. 
I highly suggest finding a pattern that you like, and then you can just cut it out. You can use your skill saw for that. You can use your miter saw for that. If it's extremely decorative, maybe having what's called a scallop or something. If you're really, really good with a jigsaw, you can use a jigsaw. You could router something. Really, it's up to you and what you want. And then all you have to do is cut your one by two pieces and then put your slats on the top. And there's your armor. Does anybody have any questions on how to build a wood arbor? Any questions, anybody? Thank you, Tracy. You're Thanks. welcome. Now we're going to build, <laughs> now we're going to do a wire one. <laughs> so uh, let me get out of this because for some strange reason, my uh, computer is freaking out right now. And bringing up a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want it to bring up. Okay, so I'm going to show you this one here. I used chicken wire and I had to use a PVC piping because the chicken wire wasn't strong enough to actually hold its shape. So what I strongly suggest is if you're going to do a wire arbor like we're going to do right now, Use the thicker hog wire and not chicken wire. Um, you can use rabbit wire if you like, but rabbit wire I think is the hardest to work with because it's just so fine. And so I'm not particularly fond of it. But the first thing that you're going to do is your materials for building a wood arbor right now with the cost of wood. I'm going to venture a guess and say if you wanted to build one exactly the shape and size of the one that I just semi-demonstrated, you're probably looking at about $250 to $300 just in materials, depending upon where you get them. Right now, um, treated 4x4s, they're right around $25 bucks or so, and then just for the two by fours and the two by sixes the two by sixes were 22 dollars today and i think the two by fours were 18. so it really just kind of depends on what your budget is but i will tell you you can go and get the t post which is what this is and i'm going to bring my computer over here so you can see what it is a t post are those little green uh, posts that you see around barbed wire fences and they come in all different sizes and thickness. You don't need, depending upon how big your arbor is and how thick your hog wire is, really determines what you need versus what you don't need. The uh, metal arbor that I built out of hog wire at Quest Gardens, I actually used the four foot T posts and I use the exact same kind of hog wire that we're going to use today and it is standing and is doing really really well. Um, these here are three foot. I did not put them in all the way because I plan on moving this so this also is for demonstration purposes as well but each of the three whether you get a three foot one or you get a five foot one they range anywhere from two dollars to five bucks for, per post so pretty good bang for your buck on that and then your hog wire depending upon the grade that you get or gauge i guess that you get which is the thickness depends on how much it is they run anywhere from 15 bucks for a small roll to 200 for 3,000 feet. I don't know how long that would be, but there, you know, you, you can get a lot for your money. Uh, total supplies for what we're about to build right now cost us, I think, $78 total. So not too, it wasn't too terrible. And I don't even think it was quite that much because the hog wire was 50 and these were, what, 250 a piece. So yeah, they weren't too bad. So I'm going to use zip ties to attach the wire. Can everybody see this okay? I'm going to try to get that as good as I can. 
I think I just hit screen share and I apologize. You're okay, Tracy. All right, how do I stop? Uh, you're not screen sharing, so you're okay. Oh, okay, well, mine says I'm screen sharing. <laughs> okay, so here's the hog wire that I am going to use. I'm using the green because I like the green color. I like the thickness of it and the weight of it. Uh, can you give me my gloves, please? Oh, and I'll take those. I highly suggest that uh, when you're working with the wire, you wear gloves just because it, it I always tend to coat. I'm not really sure why, but it always seems to like to come back and get me. So, and this smells brand spanking new. All right, there's that. I'm gonna take my gloves. Sure to get your garbage someplace safe and then throw it away and then this is where my husband's going to come and help me i cheated and put the t-posts in a little ways already uh make sure when you are doing any arbor whatsoever that you measure out the wire that you're using don't eyeball it and guess just measure it, make sure, and then uh, also make sure that your T-posts are level. And the reason why I say that is, is because when you're working with all level spaces that are all the same height, it makes it a lot easier in connecting the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap all of these so we can actually have and use the wire itself. Okay. All righty, make sure you have wire cutters because you will need wire cutters. And then, this is actually the easy part. Okay, when I grab it, okay. Just gonna come this way with it. Okay. All right, so, come out here. I'll set that right there. Then I'm going to cut my, these are my wire cutters. And we're just going to count. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, Okay. So we're going to go right. If I could see this. All right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hand those back to my husband who is also helping. Now that I have clean edges, I'm gonna take one of my gloves off. I'm gonna grab two, three zip ties from him. And then we come down here and we'll put that in. There's little hooks on your T-post. Some of them go down, some of them go up. And go right there with them. You can use wire, you can use zip ties, you can use just and you can use just about anything you want to for it. And we are just going to attach a zip line right and tight and right there the same thing on this side and yes use more than one zip tie 
zip tie it in a couple of different places because that will make it more secure. All the way down. And then we're going to come right here. We're going to put that right there. That right there. Right there. There you go. Now you have your metal arbor and you can plant vines on it. If you want it to have a little more structural stability, you can add the PVC pipe. If you don't like the PVC pipe look and you just want the grain, metal grain look with it, can you guys see that okay? Can you see it? I don't know how well it's showing up. It is. Okay. You can use the thicker gauged wire that is uh, stronger. It holds its shape. It can also hold grapevines, wisteria. Really, it can with the, the thicker gauge can really do quite a bit and hold quite a bit more. So you can do a trailing rose. Really, sky's the limit with it. Any questions? Questions, anybody? If you don't have any in the chat box, please speak up if you have a question. And that's how you build the two different types of arbors that I know how to build. Either the wood or the metal. As you can see, the metal does not take very long. I actually did one out front for my wisteria bush, or I have two wisteria bushes that I planted in front of our shop. And I built that one all by myself. And it took me, um, I'm gonna say it probably took me about an hour and a half to do. And most of that was because when I attached the PVC, because the top was a lot taller than me, I uh, struggled a little bit with the PVC pipe until I got one side completely attached. But um, they can be done all by yourself, something very easy, something that is very aesthetically pleasing and can really enhance your garden in a lot of ways. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Lori, did you have a question? Yeah, I just was wondering what your plan was for that particular one that you just finished. This what? one here? Th this yeah. one? Yes. Actually, I'm going to take it down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there and it's not completely in there, but it is going in the similar spot. The only difference is, is, is I've got to move it one box over because I have, as you can see, I've got stuff in this box here. I'm actually going to do it in this box because that thing that is the viney thing, that's another passion fruit vine, oh. and it needs something to grow on. And it's gotten to the point where I really do need to have an arbor, and so that's actually what's going to go there. Okay. I just didn't want to dig up my plants and stuff today. Marilee, go ahead. Um, I was wondering how tall is that? I don't, I don't know how tall you are, so I have no reference. Uh, I am five three, so that that one there is probably about five four, because I can fit underneath it just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so. How tall? How tall um, do you think you could go with that and have it maintain its integrity? That it would still be. Or would you use taller T? If you're, if you're gonna go taller, I would use a thicker gauged wire because you can go as tall as you want with a thicker gauged wire. It might take you just a little bit more time and practicality, but um, you really do have, I mean, the thicker gauged wire that you can buy 
really holds up really well. That's uh, what you see in like the Castle Rock Garden School Gardens. You see it in the Longview School Gardens. Uh, I'm trying to think of where else other places in town where you would see them like that. But um, yeah, with the thicker gauge, you can go up to six feet. You can probably even do bigger than that. And it's going to hold its integrity. And I think I'm pretty sure I've even seen greenhouses, uh, rounded greenhouses made out of that hog, the thicker gauged hog wire.